I hope that uh, you have reviewed the videos on uh, forward converter analysis uh, as well as the videos on uh, buck converter design and some of the buck converter design examples uh, because the design of the forward converter is uh, very similar to that of the basic uh, buck converter design. The main difference from a buck converter design is the design of this extra component, the, the transformer. And probably the transformer is the first thing that we need to design in any uh, isolated converter. Uh, but let me emphasize that this video is not on the physical design of a transformer. That is something that we will take up uh, much later after we have um, reviewed uh, several more magnetics principles. Um, but this video is, uh, is uh, related to designing the various parameters, especially the turns ratio, some of the RMS currents of the different windings that will be needed in the eventual design of the eventual physical design of the transformer. Okay. So let's start with the uh, the turns ratio n primary to n reset and in fact this is a slide directly from the buck, uh, forward converter analysis video uh, where we looked at the actual the trade-off involved in the choice of n reset. So if you make n reset uh, small then you have higher Dmax and uh, with the attendant uh, advantages in terms of the uh, switch peak and RMS current training and lower uh, filter lower filter inductor requirement. But um, lower value of uh, N reset um, as seen from this equation also result in, results in a higher switch voltage stress uh, requiring higher uh, voltage rated MOSFETs um, which have higher RDS on and higher conduction losses. So, so it's a trade-off. Um, so unless there are uh, any other compelling reasons, the choice of uh, N reset equal to N primary is a good choice. It's uh, popularly used. But um, but let's say you have a stock of, uh, um, a big stock of high voltage MOSFETs and you want to use them in this uh, forward converter design. Then uh, you may purposely choose a lower value of uh, N reset. And uh, we know that the lower value leads to higher voltage stress, but we have high voltage MOSFETs. But then we get the benefit of other advantages that come with the increased uh, Dmax. Next, we come to the important uh, turns ratio between the, uh, uh, the primary winding and the secondary winding. And this is denoted by the lower case EN. Uh, actually, 1 is the EN, where N stands for N secondary over N primary. Now, we have derived in the uh, forward converter analysis videos that the output voltage VO is given by N times D times the input voltage VN. So we would expect that the design of the N would uh, depend on, on this equation, meaning we will make use of this equation to come up with a method for determining the value of N. Now, just in the previous video, we saw that uh, increasing the duty ratio or maximizing D is advantageous in terms of uh, requiring smaller value of the output inductance uh, and reduced uh, switch peak and RMS current ratings which uh, lead to lower uh, switch losses both in terms of the conduction losses as well as the switching losses. So it is in our interest to uh, choose EN such that the D for uh, any given operating condition or for the worst case uh, conditions is uh, as large as possible, D as large as possible. Um, so that would directly lead to this equation which uh, once again comes from our basic uh, this equation here. Okay. So uh, essentially we want to be able to regulate the output voltage to the required value and in case the output voltage is uh, varying we want to be able to regulate to the maximum required output voltage even when the input voltage is at its minimum value. Okay, that is the requirement for N uh, coming from this equation. And uh, so under that condition, that is when we will be operating at the maximum duty ratio. Okay. And note that the Dmax may be limited by the value of N reset that we chose uh, from the, the previous uh, design step. Okay. So knowing Dmax and uh, given minimum input voltage and the required output voltage, we can use this equation to calculate the turns ratio between primary and the secondary windings. Now, uh, all of these are ideal situations and uh, 
transformers have several non idealities uh, chief among them or the uh, or at least related to uh, the design of the uh, turns ratio uh, or the um, the winding resistances as well as the the leakage inductances um, the leakage inductance uh, uh, influences the design of yen because it can um, it can reduce the uh, maximum output voltage available uh, compared to the ideal case and similarly the winding resistances uh, as well as the resistance of the switches the uh, switch uh, forward drops they all contribute to reducing the output voltage from what is predicted by this equation but of course uh, given these non idealities we still need to be able to regulate the output voltage even under the worst case minimum input condition uh, and the way we do that is by slightly increasing the design value of yen from this ideal value okay. uh, and we do that by introducing this uh, factor called the margin factor km and with that included the equation for n turns ratio is uh, uh, required output voltage over uh, this margin factor d max times bn minimum okay. now the value of km can be uh, in the range of uh, say 0.9 to uh, 0.95 and the choice of km may also be influenced uh, if we have uh, very stringent uh, transient requirements uh, especially for uh, sudden uh, step application of uh, load current okay so i talked briefly about this value of d max and the uh, on the fact that it is influenced by our choice of n reset uh, but in uh, many cases in the majority of cases we choose n primary equals n reset and therefore d max is fixed at uh, 0.5 okay so those are the two uh, turns ratio uh, selection uh, i also mentioned we need uh, several other parameters that are needed in the physical design of the transformer uh, some of them are listed here the first is the uh, maximum volt seconds that we will apply to any of the windings and this is uh, useful in determining the uh, uh, the core area and the number of turns um, and such so we will uh, give the expression for the primary winding volt seconds the volt seconds for all the other windings are related just by the turns ratio okay so if you consider the operating condition of d max uh, that is when the input voltage is at the minimum value okay? um, so the maximum volt seconds is uh, we are applying vn minimum for a duration of d max times ts so that is the maximum volt second if the uh, operating condition changes let's say we are have a higher input voltage uh, let's say the highest input voltage in that case will be vn maximum times d minimum and that will be exactly equal to this value uh, we also need the rms current values in all the windings for the primary winding it carries a current of n times io uh, for a duration of dts okay so if we take the rms of that value assuming the current the inductor current to be a constant value meaning we are neglecting the small inductor current ripple and we are also neglecting the small magnetizing current um, so with that the rms current is given by this expression and the rms current for the secondary winding which carries the uh, the load current whenever it conducts and it conducts for the duration of the same d times ts and the maximum rms current is when the d is at at its maximum value so it's square root of d max times the maximum load current we also have a third winding the reset winding uh, its voltage rating is uh, comparable to that of the primary winding but its current rating is uh, is almost negligible it's very small the design of because the output only filter uh, inductor carry as well as the, uh, the filter capacitor uh, the reset current identical is proportional to the both in current concept very small. as well as in it also the various uh, equations used only doing uh, is identical uh, to that part of a buck converter design so, so it's rms all i have is uh, the slides uh, that we still need to calculate that buck converter uh, determine uh, design we have to determine the wire equally valid for the i will not go through these slides uh, so this one is related to the um, l value it's given by this expression and uh, even though the inductor uh, voltage waveform uh, this will be nv in minus vo this expression is in terms of the off interval where it is minus vo in both forward and the buck therefore this expression is exactly the same for the forward converter as well uh, these are these are the uh, trade offs involved 
in selecting a larger or smaller current ripple. Um, it's, it's the same. And these are the four parameters that we will need to uh, make a selection of the inductance. And again, each of these four equations are valid uh, equally for uh, the forward as well as the, the bug. Uh, this is uh, the output capacitor selection. We know that the capacitor selection is based on either this ideal capacitive impedance or the uh, ESR or the RMS current reading. This expression for if this were an ideal capacitor, uh, how much C you would need to meet the output voltage uh, ripple specification. Uh, but it's almost rarely required because uh, the design is normally dominated by the ESR requirement. And this is the expression for the ESR, again, same as that of the buck and uh, the uh, RMS current reading is again given by this expression. Delta IL is the peak to peak inductive current ripple over 2 square root 3 gives the RMS current of the capacitor. The uh, switch selection for the MOSFET uh, we may have already discussed the switch voltage rating is um, for the case of N primary equals N reset the voltage is this VN plus the induced voltage which for 1 is to 1 it's also another VN so it's 2 times VN. But in general, uh, the switch voltage is Vn max plus Vn max times this N primary over N reset. Um, these are all considering ideal cases only, ideal um, operating conditions, ideal transformer, ideal switches. Uh, but uh, especially for isolated converters, uh, we have to consider the, uh, uh, the leakage inductance of the transformer. Uh, especially in uh, uh, designing the uh, voltage rating of the of the switches. Um, so, for example, if there is a leakage inductance, uh, if if we consider leakage inductance, um, that uh, stored energy is not actually fed into the source during the off interval through this resetting process. So, um, that energy would actually uh, be uh, it has to be dissipated in some form of snubber circuits which are um, RC or RCD networks connected either uh, across the switch or across the winding and they dissipate this uh, leakage energy, le the stored energy in the leakage inductance. Um, so, so these equations assume that we have made um, provisions for this number circuit and uh, we have taken care of these voltage spikes. The uh, current rating for the MOSFET um, it is same as the uh, primary uh, winding current and that is uh, predominantly N times the inductor current. Inductor current is mostly IO with a small ripple. Uh, so that current times N uh, is the, uh, the main load current component and there is also a small magnetizing current component and the sum of these two peak values gives you the peak uh, switch current rating. If you look at uh, the diodes on the secondary side uh, diode D1 for example, uh, when D1 is off, D2 is conducting, connecting the secondary winding across D1. Now this is the off interval of the MOSFET and during that time the voltage across the secondary winding is decided by the voltage applied to the reset winding and the turns ratio between the reset and the secondary winding. So it is um, voltage applied to the reset winding is V in max and the turns ratio here is N secondary over N reset. That's the peak voltage for the diode. The average current, uh, first of all, the peak current for the diode, it carries the same uh, inductive current. So the peak inductive current is its peak value. The average current, it conducts the inductive current whose average is uh, the load current for a duration of D, D max times Ts, or the D times Ts, the worst case condition is D max. Therefore, the average current is D times I and both maximum values. Similarly, diode D2. Um, when it is off, D1 is conducting. It applies again V secondary across the diode, but this is during the on interval, and therefore the um, switch, uh, the diode voltage is determined by the primary winding voltage and its turns ratio with the secondary. Okay. So that will be V in max times uh, N secondary or N primary, but N secondary or N primary is what we denote by this lowercase n. The peak current rating is again same as before. It is the peak inductor current and the average current, uh, we're talking about D2, it conducts the inductor current during the period 1 minus DTS. Therefore, its average value is 1 minus uh, D times IO 
and the worst case would be when the D is minimum. That's what maximizes this expression and consider the maximum load current. Okay, we have seen that it is uh, fairly easy to get multiple isolated outputs in any isolated DC-DC converter. So for example, if you want a two output forward converter design, all you have to do is to add another secondary winding, have these uh, two diodes output uh, LC filter for the second output as well. And uh, the design of the turns ratio N2 is, uh, is given by this expression. That is the ratio of the two output voltages is the same as the ratio of the two um, secondary windings, uh, winding turns. Uh, and it's uh, fairly easy to see that uh, the voltage that uh, uh, the average voltage across this would be N1 times Vn times the, the D. Okay? And that is also since VL average is zero, that is also equal to VO1. Similarly, the voltage average voltage that comes here would be uh, N2 times Vn times the same D. Remember, there is only one MOSFET, there is only one duty ratio control, there is only one D. Okay? And so N2 Vn D equals VO2. Just take the ratios, you will get uh, this expression okay? because Vn and D are the same in both of these uh, cases. At, uh, only one of these two output voltages can be precisely regulated for the same reason that we have only one control, only one DT ratio control. Now if these two are identical and uh, uh, they are identically loaded, then the output voltage can be very close to each other. But we know that uh, you know the loads on these two, they are dynamically varying. So um, under different load conditions, uh, let's say VO1 is precisely regulated, VO2 would still be fairly well regulated and not as precisely as VO1 because that is not being actually fed back and used to control the duty ratio. Uh, but with a reasonably good coupling between the two windings, uh, we can expect fairly good regulation of VO2 as well. And finally, it is also possible to couple these two output inductors, meaning they can be two coils but wound on the same core and that results in uh, some savings in the size and cost of the uh, of the two inductors and therefore the combined system.